Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be working on these alcohol ink peekaboo tumblers. They're so much fun so let's get started. So you want to start with a fully prepped and ready cup and base paint spray painted in a flat white and once that's completely dry I usually set it aside let it sit for the night and then you go straight in to epoxy right on the painted tumbler and I just want to take a quick second to apologize for this really weird camera angle the room where I epoxy my cups I have a camera stand but it's broken so this is the only way that it can hold my camera so sorry about that so once you have all that epoxy on your cup and heated just a little bit to get the bubbles out you go right in with your alcohol ink i did the colors of fire so i have two shades of red two shades of orange and two shades of yellow now let me tell you that you need to have the mindset of less is more so start really light-handed with the red and the orange and then you can always add more later but as you'll see in the other tumbler that i did i got a little heavy-handed with the red and it completely took over the yellow i just went straight in with some drops of red and some drops of orange and then where most of the blank spots are i filled in with the two shades of yellow and then i went back and added a little bit more red after that it's because as the epoxy is self-leveling, it's blending all those colors and they're all coming together. So if you're too heavy handed with one color, it can muddle up the rest of the colors and completely take it over. My design part is only going to be in the center of the cup. So I didn't need to waste extra alcohol ink by worrying about the very top and the very bottom of this tumbler. When I was happy with the way that the colors looked, I just took my heat gun on the lowest setting. This one is from CC DIY, and I just helped blend the colors a little bit, and then I stopped. You don't want to heat it too much because you could burn your epoxy, and you don't want to deal with that either. Another thing that I often do is after I heat it with my heat gun is I will change the direction of my turner so that it just helps give it a better blend look for these alcohol inks instead of all going in one direction, if that makes sense. So you can see there I had just changed it. Here's a better angle back here. And then when that was ready out of removable vinyl, I always use a color that I never use. So my mind tells me that this orange removable vinyl is for peekaboo looks. So I cut out the main portion of the peekaboo that I want, which is just the word dad, but it also has some words with the circles, but I wanted to know that where I placed it, it would lay flat since it is a slight curved tumbler for this one. So I cut the lines of that circle along with it, but those will not stay for this peekaboo portion. So it laid that down, it laid down nice and flat. I did have a little wrinkle in the dad swoop. So after I take off the transfer tape, I just take my X-Acto knife and lift up that bubble and lay it back down flat. After I got that one all laid down flat and the extra part of the circle removed, I set that one aside and we're going to work on our 20 ounce straight tumbler. So I just have to tell you a little something about this barbecue design vinyl that is going on the 20 ounce straight. I designed it and it will soon be available for purchase on the Diamonds and Dust website. So I will let you know as soon as that is available, but that's super exciting. So I measured about how high of a width I wanted the bottom portion of this tumbler to have this design. And then I marked it off with a pen so that I knew where to start my flames or where about to have my flames for this peekaboo. I also cut that out of removable vinyl and the thing with this one is because you're going to be covering up the bottom part. If you don't completely get the frame flame border completely straight, it's okay because you can make it look straight once you have the vinyl on there. So I just applied this 
flame border as straight as I possibly could and then pushed it down with my fingers just to make sure that there's no edges where the black paint will seep under those little flames. I did have a little bit of an overlap and I just trimmed that off and then I had another piece that had a little bit higher flame so I just added that in there and you'll never be able to tell once we spray paint it that we pieced it together. I did add a few extra flames and then once that was done I took both the tumblers outside and spray painted them and then I set them aside until they were completely dry and then we are going to peel up all of that removable removable vinyl. The nice thing about there being no glitter is that it's very simple to see where those vinyl lines are to peel them up. My needle nose plier needle nose tweezers are getting a little dull and they don't seem to close flat lately so I use just the very tip of my exacto knife because it was very sharp and once I could get a little bit of it lifted I pulled the rest with my hand because you don't want to chance scraping any other part of the tumbler and trust me I've done it so many times before I've just learned to go really slow and instead of kind of scraping it, I kind of poke it and try to pull it up and then that helps like lift a little bit and then able to grab it with my fingers and just pull off as much as I can. After I got this dad one all pulled up, I set it aside and moved over to the flame one and peeled up all of that removable vinyl and then we're going to move into the next part of this flame one. After all of those flames are removed, I went right in to apply the pattern vinyl, and this isn't actually the pattern vinyl from Diamonds and Dust yet. It will be available soon, but as of right now, it is just printed on some sticker paper that I had at home, but it will be available in a 12 by 12 pattern sheet. Once I had that all lined up and figured out exactly where I wanted it, I just cut a little of the backing off like we do, and then just applied it like the hinge method, like we do all of our other tumbler wraps. Once I had that vinyl applied, I cut the decal for this tumbler. It says Grill Master and I actually designed it and it will be available on my website. I will link it down in the description box so if you would like to purchase it you can have it as well. I decided to do it in white so it really stood out against that black with the flames underneath it and I applied that where there were no flames so just kind of in an opening of where the flames were and it is the perfect touch to this barbecue themed tumbler. Once I had that applied, both tumblers got a coat of epoxy before we move into the next step on the dad tumbler. So I didn't record what I did for the dad decal, but I'm going to try to explain it in a quick little rundown. So I took the dad decal and I duplicated it and where just the dad word and the swoosh underneath were, I separated it from the original decal and I made a very, very thin offset to it. And then I put the offset back in the original decal instead of the solid piece so that I would just be cutting out the offset, not the solid part in the middle. I hope that makes sense. Then I welded it all back together. So when you're applying it, I'm just applying the regular words in that circle from the beginning that I mentioned and then just this offset for the dad and the swoosh and the offset is super super thin it's a 0 0.020 offset so that it's very thin and doesn't really take away from the design it doesn't move into the other part of the circle but it just outlines those words and the swoosh. 
it all laid down very nicely. I did have one little spot and I'll show you here in just a second how I did some vinyl surgery just to make it all lay down flat and you would never know that there was an issue. So I took off the backing, cut it apart, and then just put the backing back on so that just the middle part of the vinyl was showing so that I could line that up and then move to the top and then move to the bottom just to apply it slowly and hopefully avoid any wrinkles or any malfunction in applying this decal because you know on a curved tumbler it's nerve-wracking I hold my breath when I do this and you can see up there on the top where the word myth is I do have a little bubble but again we will just fix that so you can see here the right side of that swoosh kind of broke apart and isn't laying down correctly so after I removed all of the transfer tape I just took my exacto knife edge lifted it a little bit lined it up where it was supposed to go and laid it back down and it was perfect you'd never know since it just kind of cut right there on the edge make sure though you're not pulling on this vinyl when you lift it because it will stretch and you don't want that you want it to stay exactly the shape of the design so i just fixed this edge and then on the left side under the d for dad it did the same thing so i just did a little vinyl surgery there as well and perfect you'd never know and then over here on that top where it says myth and there's a little bit of a bubble in the circle part i just lifted it laid it down and it was fine you'd never know since it was just part of the circle and it just basically had a bubble Now we're going to move back over to the barbecue tumbler. So on the edges of the vinyl, I just took a thin strip of black vinyl and outlined the pattern vinyl with the solid black. And then in the center of the solid black, I added a strip of red vinyl. After I applied the red, I was looking at it and it just seemed so dark to me. I felt like it needed a little something extra so I happened to find some yellow nail tape that I had because I have abundance of all of these colors because I ordered them so many times off of Amazon and I had the perfect yellow so I went and added the yellow to the center of the red vinyl stripe and it was perfect it really gave those fire element colors and it was exactly the perfect touch that it needed after I applied that, I coated both of the tumblers with polycrylic, let those dry completely, and then gave them each two more coats of epoxy, and they were all finished. I thought I was going to love this barbecue one, but I ended up loving the dad one. I think it's because the way the fire colors really blended so well together, so when it's in that peekaboo, it's just a fun pop of something different. And let me tell you, I am a new user of polycrylic and it is a complete lifesaver. I have struggled with lifting vinyl or fish eyes in my metallic vinyls and it is amazing. It doesn't change the look of it, it just helps it all stay in place before you epoxy it. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and you love these tumblers. I hope that I have inspired you in some way. You could do these peekaboos with any color, any design. This was just a fun take on my last dad inspired tumbler for this month. Both of these tumblers will be available on my website for purchase and I would love for you to subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything in the future. I always post on Saturdays and sometimes I post on Wednesdays. 
if I can get that extra content out there for you. So all of my socials will be listed down in the description box and all of the links and discount codes that I have to offer you. And I hope that you will be back and I will see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks and I will see you next week. Bye.